Well, welcome everyone to Thriving Together. This is a new broadcast for people over 60 in and around the Beverly area. Uh, we're a small team that uh, hope to explore a variety of topics of interest to older adults. And uh, we hope that they will uh, inspire you and encourage you to think about, uh, give you food for thought, you know, and food for, and food for reflection about what it's like to grow older and what the challenges and the wonders, you know, and the joys are. Uh, we'll hope you'll join us for this weekly broadcast. And so today we're going to introduce ourselves. I'm Sue, and we're going to tell you a little bit about uh, what we hope to do, who we are, and uh, you can kind of get to know us a bit. Carol is over here. We've got Lynn over here. And our other illustrious team member is Lily, who's behind the camera over there. So she will be off screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lynn, why don't you go ahead and take it away? OK, well, I think since so. Um give a little history of where I'm at and how I got older. <laughs> it's, and I've been, I've been a nurse for like 50 years. And it's like I've gone from the pediatric and then transitioned into the um, long-term care and really encountered a lot of, of issues with aging and with people who are in the facilities aging and um, with home care. I then transitioned to hospice, <laughs> which is also another part of, of like growing older and, and what you need to face. So, But always all along that way, notice that getting older was never something people treated very positively. And for me, it was like, I don't want to get old and just not do anything. I want to be positive. I want to learn. I want to keep growing. I want to know what's going on. And, uh, but I never wanted to get involved with the senior center because that was old. <laughs> so, but I realized that as I turned, you know, 65, went on the Medicare, as I start, um, you know, like getting older, I mean, I was I'm still working now, but I was working, you know, full time up to a, a few years ago, is that there are things out there we need. The first thing I needed was that even though I had worked with Medicare for years, I didn't understand Medicare as a recipient as I got older. A friend of mine said, call the Shine Counselor. So I called the Shine Counselor, had some you know, in-depth discussions about what would be the best thing for me to, to uh, get for the coverage for Medicare, never in my head associating that with the Council on Aging, because I wasn't going to be part of the Council on Aging because <laughs> I didn't want to get old. <laughs> and, uh, so then it was uh, things over the over the years got to be where you know I learned about some of the things I learned about that there was a lawyer that you could call through the counseling on aging for you know questions you had or things you needed to figure out and I was like okay that makes two things I've done now with the council on aging <laughs> <laughs> then then just learned like you know stopping in on a lot of the things with that you know there there was the CSA program there was the the, the um, you know they had their vegetable garden they have. All those things. They have a seamstress. That, What's CSA? Oh, uh, uh, the, the um, I can't remember. But it's a farming where they do the, the oh. shares on the farming. OK. So that you would have the fresh vegetables, and that was run through the Council on Aging. And then I then it was like coming to where, you know, the, the tax abatement for seniors. And that was also through COA. So it was like, hmm, I'm getting a little involved here, <laughs> you know. but. But it really is. It's like a place where there are things that we need. There are things that you don't really know you need or things that you don't know are associated with the Council on Aging. And they sort of snuck up and got me. So here I am involved in Council on Aging. <laughs> so, now, have you always been in Beverly? No. Tell I'm, us a little bit about. Uh, right. My, my history is that I, I am from Pennsylvania. Well, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, you know. Um, went to nursing school down there, worked in uh, Philadelphia at the Children's Hospital, um, moved around down there a while, and then moved up to Massachusetts. So, and when moving up to Massachusetts, it's like I got, I had done my stints in the hospitals and stuff, and I went into where facilities were in terrible shape, where there was abused, the elderly were abused, they were terrified of living where they were, they were, you know, and they were, you know, some of them on the verge of being closed down. And, 
So it was like, okay, my job was to go turn them around, mm -hmm. get those people taken care of right, you know, and but got to know so many of the elderly at that point who I thought, of course, were much older than me. Now I'm here. But uh, it just, I mean, so it was, to me, the most rewarding thing was getting to know that the elderly are not these people that are just put off somewhere and that, you know, oh, you have to take care of all the things. You'd have people laying in bed who, who would just say, I wish someone would just know that it's me, that I'm mm -hmm. still here, you know. So it really, I mean, I got, that to me was the awakening on sort of the whole thing of age and ageism and, you know, so. But I think part of what we're here for is to show that those are myths now, that we really, the aging today can be whatever you want. You, you may be, you know, shut in. You may not be able to get out. You may not be able to do things, but there are still things that are available. There's still the whole uh, interaction thing of, of being involved with the other people who are at the uh, uh, senior center, if you want to. There's ways of, of just using the resources, still being like some of us, not wanting to involve, get involved too much with people. But it's just a lot of, of different, you know, things that are available there. So I'm hoping this becomes a very uh -huh. place where we can get everybody involved, where we can get people the resources uh -huh. they need. Uh -huh. so. well, let's hear from Carol. Sure. So here's a little bit about who I, who I am, who I've been in my life before right. I was a senior. Um, I didn't start college until I was 30, and then I majored in physics and math, not subjects that young women were involved in. Right. I, um, after graduation, I was turned down for a job as an industrial engineer and told that the person hiring thought I was the best person for the job, but they wouldn't let him hire a woman. So this was in the 80s. It was legal then. It's no longer legal. Um, most of my career has been in the corporate world, in technology management. I'm not involved much with technology anymore. I'm 77. I retired when I was 70 after spending 10 years teaching as a special ed teacher at Landmark School in Beverly. Oh, that's hard. It was, it was fabulous. It was right. fabulous. And so I've been retired for seven years. Most of my time is spent as an activist. I'm a Quaker. I'm an activist. I've stood in front of a moving coal train to stop coal from being <laughs> delivered to a coal plant. I've been arrested and handcuffed and put in jail and released on bail. I continue to do a lot of activism, although I'm not, I don't particularly want to be arrested again. Um, and there's a long story of how I came to senior centers, but let's hear from Sue first about what you're all about. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll do a, my intro with a little bit of a geographical framework. I grew up on a farm in Iowa. Okay. Well, I just had to get to the city. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, uh, I trained as a nurse in Iowa. Of course, there were at that time, you know, there were... English teacher and nursing were kind of the two things right. that I was aware of. That secretary. I could do that. secretary. Secretary. Right. 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 Secretary. And, uh, and uh, got married young and, and moved off to, uh, to San Francisco, where I had just the most marvelous time exploring. And of course, as a nurse, you can get a job about anywhere, right. nursing shortages, all that. So, you know, that was absolutely delightful. But then the older I got, the more I. Um, kind of missed the country, and I'd gotten into backpacking and hiking and all that stuff in Yosemite, and, you know, I had the idea that I was going to retrain as a nurse and go to work in a national park, and I moved to Idaho, <laughs> the Idaho Panhandle. Well, long story short, that certainly didn't work, because as I, I worked as a uh, psychiatric nurse, oh. and uh, as a psychiatric nurse, you calm yourself down when 
there's any agitation going on because you don't want to contribute to it. You don't want to add to it. And so here I was on a car cardiac unit, and they're throwing their, their code blues, you know, every other day there, and they're ripping open IV bottles and, you know, crash carts right. and pounding, on, you know, all that stuff. Anyway, I was like a basket case, you know. They finally learned to, you know, put a clipboard in my hand and say, write down the drugs we're giving, because I was worthless, and so there went that idea. But anyway, I ended not up... An, not an adrenaline junkie like that, <laughs> no. so, okay. <laughs> but anyway, I ended up going down to the, the North Idaho College and teaching there for 30 years, and it was really the best job wow. that I ever had. Um, my son uh, moved to Massachusetts in around 2017 after a uh, short time after he graduated from college, and here I am. I've been divorced, and... Uh, by myself, no family in Idaho, and so I struggled with that decision for quite a while, but I ended up in Beverly, Massachusetts in the Is fall it? of 2022, and so I've been kind of feeling my way and, uh, you know, ever since that time, but one of the first trips I made was uh, stopping by uh, the senior center and signing up just because I knew about senior centers. I'd had I had students working there, you know, I placed students and I yeah. did some presentations for the Alzheimer's Association and different things yeah. like that. And so I, uh, I was happy to, you know, to connect up and I read that newsletter diligently and I'm going to Tai Chi at two o'clock this afternoon. And that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> let's, let's move on and talk about uh, how we got where we got. So... I, like many other people, when I was younger, thought of the senior center as just something for old people who didn't have a life and didn't do right. anything. And what yeah. actually got me involved the first time in the senior center, I think this was the first time, was I was probably in my mid-60s um, when I was teaching at Landmark, so I had summers off. I started in a tap dancing class in Marblehead, the senior center in Marblehead. It was actually, is still being taught yeah. in multiple senior centers. And right. I had never taken dance as a youngster, so I was brand new. The, uh, Debbie, the person who teaches tap dancing to seniors, is fabulous absolutely fabulous and she really created a community uh -huh. in these tap dancing classes so that was my introduction to senior centers and how much fun they could be i mean who would think tap dancing for seniors <laughs> right. right fabulous fabulous then i ended up getting involved in beverly in a variety of things one of them was a writing class. I had just started to write. So I joined this writing class in Beverly that continued on until COVID, because before that, everything was in person. I don't think there were online classes before that. And then my teacher, Barry Levine, who lives in Wenham, started teaching online. And so we met, we've continued to meet in person in the summer when we can be outdoors. Otherwise, we meet online for writing. And it's an every other week class on Thursdays. I'm still involved with that. Um, I go to a oh, I forget what it's called, a, a Wednesday at the Beverly COA, Bones and something. It's a fabulous exercise class that feels well, good that, for me. Right. That, that, it's like they have the things that I'm learning, since I feel like I'm the newest not totally involved yeah. in, the, in the center, is that looking through the, the, the thing, is that they have balance classes. Yes. I have, I have terrible balance, you know, and it's like part of it is my aging, part of it is other issues, whatever. Yeah. But that those things are available there, and I'm thinking now it's like, okay, that would be the easiest thing for me to do would be to go to the, the uh, mm -hmm. you know, senior center and be able to participate in those. Right. Right. Well, let's think so, a little bit about our title is called 
thriving together. Right. And I think some of the things that you guys are describing are things that help you thrive. Well, one of the, you know, I mean, what we know is as we get older, there are really three things that keep us, our brain sharp, and us as healthy as possible. And that's attending to our physical health, you know, right. managing these things that always crop up. And, uh, you know, having some way to connect with people, you know, some kind of social activity. Right. And then doing brain stuff, you know, learning new things, tap right. dancing or Tai right. Chi, like I'm going to at the senior center at two. So, right. you know, that's, what, what does thriving together mean, mean to well, you? I think the thing is that it's like in every society, you have to, to really work together to really, or come together to really realize the potential you have. That sometimes when you're alone and you're, you know, by yourself, you're not going to really be motivated to do things or whatever. But when you see that there are other people there and the other people have the same issues you have, the same, you know, desires you have for really, mm -hmm. you know, being better, growing, wanting to be recognized as being a valuable and valued person in our society, it's like you need those resources. So the Senior Center to me has those resources yeah. to help us so that we can come together, we can thrive together to become our best person. And it's not to say that everybody aging is the same. We have so many different ways that people age and, and all, but to have some resources that help us age the way we want to age mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to realize that you have that support yeah. of people who really feel the same. Mm -hmm. That aging, you don't want to be relegated to the, oh, they're old, you know, yeah. type of a thing. Yeah. Well, you mentioned ageism. Right, You know, yes. earlier. And it, I think that we are in a new time right. for older adults being um, thriving, you know, and not right. seeing aging as a negative, but to recognize that there are some positive things, there are some but, positive things to be had in aging if you are aware of them. Absolutely, right. you know? absolutely. And thriving for me, that word thriving, in a sense, it's the opposite of what I saw for older people. I never right. saw them as thriving. I saw them as just existing. And now it's, uh, I would not have believed that at 77, I could be this alive. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, and you know what, that reminds me, one of the things, you know, I, it's, I spent a year in a, a program with Saging International, and the way we introduce our age in that program, we say, I have 73 years of life experience. Right. I love it. I and love isn't it. Isn't that good? Because I have 77 and that's, years and of that's what this time, yeah, <laughs> And that's what this time is all about. Right. Is how, right. how do you thrive? Well, you know, you know your body's doing that thing. It's right. doing that thing. Right. But you can still... You can still thrive, you know, and, conscious aging, right. you know, and to bring the and to bring, bring the wisdom forward. of everything we've, yes, we've learned exactly. and stuff, and that it not exactly. be just sort of poo pooed. Oh well, you know, there is a wisdom that comes with aging. That's yeah, right. and yeah, it's like but so you that, have to look back over your life, right. and call that, that wisdom, right? Yeah. and it really is. It's like you know, but if we can do it together in whatever way right. is possible, that yeah. we can thrive together. Uh -huh. That is just an amazing place to be, I think. Yeah. So, so it's exciting one, right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one of my goals for this programming is to let people know that this exists, because I'm sure there are people in their 60s who think of the Senior Center as, oh, that's for old people, right. and they don't realize how much there is. Uh -huh. So in future programs, we're going to be exploring the enormous variety of things that are available mm -hmm. at right. the Senior yeah. Center. Yeah, and also the fact but, that there are a lot of opportunities and options available to get involved everywhere and, around Beverly. Right. right. And That's so right. while we're going to look at the Senior Center, we're going to bring out in it, other resources and other things right. that, are of, that, are, that might be of interest to people. It, right. It doesn't have to be confined to the Senior Center. Right. That's it can right. be the, right. in mm -hmm. some ways, the Senior Center can be the jumping off point uh -huh. into bigger and better things yeah. that you want to do or yeah. things that you want to you know, develop. Yeah. It's like, I, I hope Lily doesn't mind this, but it's like, you know, some of her great ideas she's had through this whole thing. It's like, there's so many ideas that, that people have mm -hmm. that to really, you know, not necessarily say, oh, the senior center, you have to do that. 
but to really take it upon mm -hmm. ourselves because we are thriving to get there and <laughs> we can really, you know, bring new things about. So uh -huh. it's really, it's like, Hopefully this is a, a, a start and a jumping off for it to really empowering. Yeah, well, and it's so, you know, you know, as somebody new to the area, I've been here not two years, it's just kind of devastating to leave all of that right. stuff, all the people behind and all that. And how do you, you know, how right. do you meet new people if you want to, you know, Right. If you want to develop friendships, you know, at mm -hmm. seventy with seventy three years of life experience, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, going. To, I went to the Y. I went to the Senior Center. You know, I go to the Explorers Institute in uh, Salem, and all. We're going to talk about that in one of the sessions, and. Um, I also have a dog, and so I do a lot of dog walking, and I've met a lot right. of neighbors, and I got invited into a local. Book club, so <laughs> and that's you know when you brought up the Y, I go to the Y to, to the pool. Yeah. And the first time I start going there, I was amazed at the number of older people that are at the Y. Yeah. Yes. And they're in the pool, just you know, doing the exercising and stuff. And it's like I thought, okay, in my mind, they didn't belong there, but there I am being there, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And it's like. Okay, aging has a whole yeah, new yeah. thing to it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I've done water aerobics for over 15 years, I think, just because arthritis, you know, right. but, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's mar marvelous exercise. Right. And it's just, I mean, the fact that, that you don't picture older people really in these settings most right. of the time, That's you know, you think, oh yeah, the young athletic swimmer, the, the you know. Well, we're, we are the baby booming we generation. Are. Right. We're right. a big cohort. Yep. Right. <laughs> and, and we are, we're, right. we're, we're in your faces. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. We're not shrinking violets. No, no. <laughs> I, I joined the Y about a year ago, yeah. and I had not been a member since but, I was 25 and, and yeah, taking but, my son to swimming yeah, huh. classes. Uh -huh. So and, so like 50 years, uh -huh. and, right. and I, I love uh -huh. it. I love the water yeah. aerobics class. Yeah, I'm just it's saying right. there's a warm pool over in Marblehead. <laughs> right, I know. That's a, that has a draw to it. <laughs> there are some things about aging that are not exactly fun, but, you know. Right. But the thing right. is, it's like you're just getting there, getting through uh -huh. things, right. really making right. sure. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah, it's not time to give up. No. There's yeah, still yeah. It's, so much here for was us. that somebody the other day said to me, 80 is a new 60, you know? <laughs> and it's yeah. almost true, because it's like, I did not expect to feel uh -huh. as vibrant at 70, yeah. you know, 6 right. as I do. I feel right. like, you know, I, should I be decrepit? <laughs> You know? No, it's the and answer that's to just that. It. Right. Well, and I, it is, I you know? hope this show, um, you know, kind of entices viewers a bit, you know, right. and, uh, you know, that we're going to try and figure out how to make it funny. Right. And it, right. Make it funny. And, make, you and know. entertaining. You know, and at the same time, bringing in resources right. and ideas and uh, enthusiasm for, you know. Right. And to uh, listen. Yeah, having solicit good ideas years. from people who do watch us or whatever to really, you know, give us ideas for what you want to see, what you want to want to, you know, hear yes. us. Yes. What what interviews you want us to do with people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is important to say. We are just beginning. Right. We have too too many ideas <laughs> to too many to, ideas. to work with. We have, we have so many ideas and we want to know listeners' ideas, watchers, right. people who are watching. If you've got ideas about what you would like to see, if there's something in Beverly that has brought you to life more, share that with us. We, right. And we want to bring that back. We want to bring that back to you. Right. It is. It's just, you know, really wanting to make sure that we're not the only voice that's that's crying these things out and saying, you uh -huh. know, let's, let's do this. Let's learn this. Let's really, you know, right. reach our potential. Right. And it is. I mean, life is getting longer for people. You got more time to do things. Yep. Yep. If you need help, there's help available in some ways for you, you know, and you can certainly give us ideas for what we can talk yeah. about. Yeah. That'll be helpful. Yeah. yeah, and if there's somebody out there who's really shy, if you feel shy and you feel like you don't know even how to get connected, Call Carol. No. <laughs> look, look, either get the newsletter or go uh, online for the Beverly Senior Center and look at the variety of things that are available. Right. And it doesn't matter if you show up and you don't know anybody there. You will be made to feel welcome. 
Right. I, I think I haven't been to all the classes, but I cannot imagine a class where you would not feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and not in not invaded either. You're, yeah. You know, you can go and do things without feeling as if you have to participate with everybody else or have to be friends with everybody. You can just come and do what you need to do for yourself, and nobody will force you into friendships and stuff either. You know. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. So. Very good. Well, certainly coming from you know the West, the reputation of New England, you know, kind of preceded my arrival. People being crusty right. and. <laughs> unfriendly and all that kind of stuff oh. and well there are a few there of those are. but for the most part no and oh. certainly you know I think seniors are welcoming to each other right I think we all have because we all look at that and see uh -huh. that we really have you know uh -huh. a lot in common all uh -huh. right so it's time it's time to say goodbye <laughs> we're right. really happy that you joined us on this first session uh -huh. Um, I, and I want to tell you about something that's coming up this Thursday, the 21st. We're at the equinox. We're at the beginning of spring. It's a time for new beginnings. So there, on Thursday night at the library, open to the public, is living and seeing as white. Particularly for white people, come to help to see, help you to see the unconscious biases that we all have. There's going to be two follow-up sessions about a month apart. This first one is Thursday night, uh, I forget if it's 7 or 7.30, we're at the Beverly Public Library. We thank you so much for joining us.